Good sir. Okay, um, a question on how to deal how to deal with um, how to deal with people when extremely triggered, maybe when hatred is coming up. Usually, when there's um, extreme, I get emotions, especially extreme emotions like hatred. It's usually I intuit uh, past life karmic stuff. There's heavy baggage there. I've probably met them before in a past lifetime. I sort of make a joke about it. They're coming back for karmic revenge for what I've inflicted on them. You know, they want their payback. Um, and um, so I think that's, um, and, um, you know, um, for me, I've had a lot of, I won't go into a lot of issues with tenants and finances and money. Uh, around organizations and people uh, and situations and tenants. So I think, um, I mean, I do two things. One is my, you know, just, um, I do try and keep my level of consciousness as high as possible on a daily basis. So these things don't come in, in the first place, not to let my, so there's the one aspect, which is my daily routine. And I try and have the strongest daily routine that I can commit to on a daily basis. I always try and build my routine. It's not usually do a, a thing as an emergency. It's more like to raise my capacity to do a stronger spiritual routine on a daily basis because I know I know that uh, the higher my level of consciousness, the less negative stuff hits me and the more quite quickly I'm able to deal with it and the more miracles happen that help me deal with it. If I somehow get lax in my daily program, then I know my consciousness drops and then all the negative stuff starts to hit and I can't really clear it very easily. So the first thing is, you know, my spiritual routine is, uh, I love Hawkins' work because he's calibrated things. I think that is the latest revelation for humanity that you, you know, like what is a true teacher from a fallen teacher? What is high calibration music from negative calibrating music? Um, what's a, you know, and actually to know the numbers, like um, uh, Westminster Abbey calibrates at 700 at the level of enlightenment, the intention it was built with. Um, uh, Mozart in the, at the level of love, 12-step um, groups, unconditional love, very high, very good for healing and addiction. Um, and um, Hawkins himself is more or less a thousand. So I wanna tune every day to those things like a radio, a uh, tuning fork. I see myself as a tuning fork. Every day I want to have, you know, my Hawkins, my 12-step groups, my Course in Miracles. Uh, Course in Miracles calibrates at the level of enlightenment. So the lessons, not the, the text, reading the book, not not that. Um, so I want to be doing all of this stuff, the Course in Miracles prayers, um, the observer practice that Hawkins talks about. Well, Hawkins talks about, you know, that the, prior to the thoughts, there's a silence you know, which is what I call the observer. Prior to the thoughts, before the thoughts, there's a silence that's always there. Uh, that, that's another way of just saying um, the observer, or as St. Francis says, what you're looking for is where you came from. It's not in your thoughts. It's not in the world. It's prior to all of that experiencing is an infinite field, which you, I should be aligned with, not getting caught up in the, the forest of thoughts and the world. Um, so listening to Hawkins and, um, and there's usually every time I listen, there's an insight that I, I need for the day. Um, and he's calibrating at a thousand. I, I also do what he says. He says, you know, 12 steps is the basics. If you can get it, if you can join a 12 step group and get, and get through the steps, that's the basics. And then the Course in Miracles lessons Then his work of, you know, going into the silent field is the next level up. So um, those things I try and have a heavy practice because that's my daily defense against, you know, and my daily level of consciousness is my greatest protection. Then, you know, even if I've got a great daily practice, of course, things come up, which are very triggering. Um, so how do I deal with, um, how do I deal suddenly, um, you know, um, hatred, uh, extreme reaction to a person, maybe at work or family or whatever, comes up in me. Well, for me, I'll keep my daily spiritual practice up no matter what. And then I'll do heavy duty um, work on that person. Um, and usually um, I do that, like the cancellation of beliefs, um, you know, if I'm feeling stressed or getting body aches or whatever, I'll cancel those out. 
Um, I cancel my belief in, I don't know, headaches or hatred. Um, well, it's a payoff, you see. I cancel my payoff from indulging in hatred. You know, uh, my, you know, it's really my glee for, for getting a, a, a kind of a joy, a, an ego juice, as Hawkins calls it, from just wallowing in hatred and getting that fix. So I cancel my, um, I cancel my addiction to the payoff of hatred. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Um, so in truth, I'm an infinite being and tr the truth, true nature in me doesn't want to get payoff from indulging in hatred and wallowing in it and the story around it. It's just, and it actually in absolute truth, there is no attraction to that. There's actually really, as you go into higher levels, there's a repulsion to indulging in those things. Um, but at a certain level, until they're cleared, there is an attraction or a payoff, um, even though the ego wants to get the payoff and then blame everyone else or, blame, you know, go, that's the usual ego mechanism. Um, I also have that mechanism. And then anyway, for me, there, there, it's a karmic situation. So whatever that person does to me, I, I see what are the themes? Are they sort of being um, hatred? Let's see. Are they sort of emanating viciousness towards me? Or it could be that I just feel it could be a lot of karmic baggage. I just feel hatred to them every time I see them. And that could be due to past lives coming up now, now that I see them. Uh, Hawkins had that, uh, you know, horses didn't like him. He had really bad karma with horses in a past lifetime. Every horse would throw him off. They eventually cleared it through the anti-karma and cancellations. And then one day a horse came up, there's a photo of it, kissing him. So a lot of this stuff, uh, once you clear the karma, suddenly magically resolves in, in love. And um, so uh, it's like um, the past life. So let's say, I don't know, they're giving... They're, they're 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 treating me with aggression so i'd say i pray for i do too i've changed a bit i used to say i pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's treated others with aggression in this lifetime and others but i've started recently just my recent modification i assume i've had specific karma with something heavy with that individual that could be wrong so it's probably better to do the general prayer so let's say i'm i'm feeling hatred towards um I don't know, let's make up a name, John Smith. Um, I pray for, and and he's treat, he's treating me with aggression. Then I'd pray for, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's treated John uh, with hatred and aggression in this lifetime and past lifetimes. And uh, I just make that, you know, that's probably not always going to be right, but it's just my guess. So I'll do those. And I'll, the aim is, of course, with something that's very, very heavy, is to clear it as fast as possible. And unfortunately, with something heavy, there's a lot of work to do. So it can mean uh, a lot of heavy duty cancelling, a lot of heavy duty anti-karma. I do actually find it does work, even though the ego, my ego can be very resistant. You don't mean I have to do this for one hour or two hours before it leaves. Well, sometimes, yes. Sometimes with heavy stuff, with its physical symptoms or... Um, real strong especially strong emotions with another individual it can but i found that does does work you know at a certain point the ego gives up the the hatred it's like you know i pray for forgiveness for the one me who's inflicted harm on others through hating them in this lifetime and others if you do that non-stop for an hour or two um usually the ego starts going i can't be bothered to hold on to hatred i'm going to give you a break before the, the hatred come back so um no, that that that's my thing. I mean, usually ha with strong hatred, sometimes the observer doesn't work so fast. Um, you can do feel the feelings as well. So just stop making a story about it. Maybe the hatred you feel it. Will you feel hatred? I don't know. Wherever it is in the body, in the stomach, in the spleen, whatever. Uh, just uh, don't label. Don't make a story. Don't label it's in the stomach area, and then just allow it, experience it, and let it evaporate. And if you can let it evaporate until it dissipates, you've taken a huge chunk of that uh, karmic baggage out of the way. Um, often, if you really clear something 100%, you will experience enormous miracles. I won't, I won't go in, the video will be too long. I've done heavy duty work with individuals and extraordinary, unbelievable miracles have happened. So it is worth it at the end of the day. I'll stop there. Okay, uh, stop recording.